Yes, shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom. This is Yadin. This is Ayadonis here. So I was asked this question just recently by a, a sister, a sister, um, and heal up uh, Hitamariam. Yes, sister Ayade had asked. Sister Ayade asked a question. And sometimes, you know, on some of the social media, we might just share some information or maybe ask one like, okay, do you know about this? Do you know about that? Or you know, how would you answer this? Or based on your knowledge of this, how would you respond to this? So the question actually was, let me just scroll back right here. Um, what is God's name? So I'm going I'm to title that right here, this, with this title. This is the subject right here, short subject, hopefully. Get in and get out on this right here. What is God's name? So my response when she asked me what is God's name, now I knew that this is, that's something that she's not aware of, but like, you know, what would I say to this? Like, what is God's name? You know, I think she should know, but let me just respond the way I responded to her. Maybe this might be helpful to others or in case you're confronted by this as well, fellow brothers, sisters, especially to the disciples, how I would respond is how I did. I said, well, w what God we're talking about, right? What God we're talking about, right? What God are we talking about, right? Some say this right here, as you see on this meme on the screen, 72 names of God. Now, first of all, God, you know, we could, that's what I said, but I said, I said, like, what God are you talking about? You know, there are many gods, right? I said to her, I said, define God I'll give you the name. If you can define, okay, what God, you know, are we speaking about? What God? Now, notice we're English speakers, first of all, first and foremost. Not to even get into the etymology of, of God, because that's a whole rabbit hole right there. Not that you can't, you know, go get in and get out, you know, but sometimes people, it's easy to get in, <laughs> right, than to get out as it were. So that's what I responded. I said, what God are we talking about? There are many gods. Now, some biblical people, maybe some Christian people, ones and ones, and this is not against anybody's particular faith or belief, but ones will say, there's only one God. There's only one God. There's only one God. There's only one God. Well, that is interesting that you say that. You know, you know, that's very interesting if one would say that. I, I wonder how this would, would come up if we search this right here. Because we're just doing this right here, just live. This is like a one-off, a one-off uh, vlog here, but on a very important, you know, subject matter right here. Let me put gods there, right? Let me put gods there. Let's see what happens. Gods, right? And we go down here, gods. Okay, only goes up to kings, right kings let me put lords there right because there's a verse i want to show you because some biblical people coming from a bible perspective okay this is good this is good so we narrow down the search as you can see right here right let's scroll down to the new testament right to the new testament first uh corinthians 8 and 5 because some people from a christian or christianity perspective you know, Bible believing or Bible referencing, however it may be for particular ones and ones, they will say, well, there's only one God. You hear a lot of Christians say, you know, about Jesus and there's only one God. But then in the same point of reference, which is the Bible that they will point to or that should be pointed to, because you're a Christian, were you back there or you got that over here based on something back there? And this is the translation... K, KJV, we, we look at the King James Version. I know there's other Bibles, that's a whole other point right there. For though there be that are called gods, right? So for though, like although there's, there's those that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So can't you see this right here? Let's bring this out like this so ones can see this. Let's um, scroll down here to a simple KJV right there. Without all the, the, um, the, the study perspective, you know, the, the Strong's uh, hyperlinks, just to keep it simple. 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 says, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth. Now, this is a little parenthetical, right? But when we look um, 
you know, like to other translations, you know, for though they are things or those that be called gods, whether in the heavens, this is a little more correct, or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords. Did you see that right there? This is First Corinthians. Need we look at the Hebrew right here? Right. Let's look at these. The Hebrew right here, here, here. Right. We have the Hebrew right here, and it says, "Wa'af ki yesh mi she nikraim Elohim bein ba'shemayim bein ba'aretz ka'asher yesh Elohim rabim wa adonim." Rabin. So it's saying that there are Kaasha Yesh Yesh. There be there exists Elohim. Elohim is a Hebrew term that can be brought out in translation and has been as gods, right? Or as God. It's a whole interesting Hebrew perspective, right? That's why I said to the sister what I said to the sister that, you know, what God are we talking about? Now, even though I know she's a Believer, you know, Mitmanan, you know, believer, I understand, you know, what she, a Rastafari sister who's also like, you know, Orthodox, you know, Ethiopian Orthodox. So I, I could answer just in an Ethiopian Orthodox, Exiavihir, Exiavihir, you know, use the term Exiavihir. Or I could have answered, you know, as an Ethiopian, more from an Ethiopian Hebrew perspective, I could have said Yahweh, 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 you know, the white. Actually, we're going about to get there, right? But first, I wanted to just for you all to look right here. You know, one you to look right here, right? You can look at it. Is this all Greek to you? In the Greek, right? I, I avoid some of the other translation and just go to the basic right here. So here it says, for though there be that are called gods. So there are those who are called gods. In fact, one of the first places we see gods is in the garden incident in Moses, Moshe's first book, the first book ascribed to Moses, right? Where the serpent said, you shall be as gods, right? Knowing good and evil. So even to, to man and people, to Adam and to his wife, his Isha, that's where we first get to see that within the translation. And I'm emphasizing within the translation. Now it goes on to say, in 1 Corinthians 8 and 6, but to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord. Notice what it says right here. This is, this is Bible, right? It says one Lord. Now, I know some say that Jesus is God and so forth and so on, and that's a whole theological kind of a thing right there. You know, if you want to get into it, but according to what the Bible says, because, see, the Bible is the first reference. Before they had their theologies of the Bible, you know, different denominations and doctrines and that are all Christian. You know, Christianity reminds me of ancient Egypt at a later point of ancient Samaritawi or the Kemetic history, you know, where there were different gnomes, you know, different denominations, 42, I think, or so, you know, they were all in one kind of school of thought, like this Christian thing, right? One school of thought, but there's different, you know, denominations, right? That might see themselves as more or less Christian because of whatever the dogma or doctrine. But basically, it all points to the Bible as a point of reference. Mm-hmm. If we look at it logically and rationally, we look at it objectively, looking at it objectively. That's why I said to my sister, and hopefully I'll share this with her, what God we're talking about. What is the God we're talking about? And somebody said, well, who is the God? Who is the God of, 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 um, <laughs> Akhenaten, right? Or oh, Akhenaten or Ankh-Aten, his, his God was the Aton or the Aten. Right? That was his God. That was a big thing with him. You know what I'm saying? If one say, who is the God of Ramesses? Right? I'll say um, Ra. Right? Ray. Ray or Ra. Right? Who is the God of Seti the first? Actually, it was Set. Suit. Right? Because their names also reflected their rulership or their belief. Especially the names, you know, that they chose or that they ruled in. Right? So here, this verse is so key right here. The second verse right here, but to us, there is but one Elohim, the father of whom are all things. So according to the Bible, there's one, 
right? According to the faith, the belief, the those who are called righteous and faithful in the Bible, from Old Testament to New Testament. But coming here to the New Testament, there is one Elohim, right? Now, even in the same Bible, other nations had other gods or other Elohim or others that they called or ascribed in heaven or on earth, so forth and so on, right? But here is saying to us. So here is speaking to the faithful community. So if you ask the faithful community, well, who is God, right? They will say, well, it's the father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord. Notice it says one Lord. In fact, I did not share this particular verse with her and I need to share this particular verse with her. I said I didn't want to get into a Bible thing when she just asked me like a basic question and I, you know, look at the question and then seek to, you know, respond with the best, you know, the best, most direct answer, you know, speaking to the person who's asking, but also, you know, to 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 others so let me just paste this in i'm actually going to send this to her because i'm recording this right here right and i'll just share the basic kjv this this very verse here first corinthians 8 and 5 now of course to get it expanded you see i started out with 8 and 5 and then went to 8 and 6 right because there are gods many right and there are lords many see that's the important acknowledgement if we're coming from this perspective. Well, I'm coming from the perspective, right, of being of the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the order of Melchizedek. You know, I'm coming from the perspective of Gurmawi Kermawi Haile Selassie. You know, the Ainai Godfather, King of Kings. You know what I'm saying? From that sort of perspective. So one can at least understand what perspective. You know, you're not like some people who act like they're universalists and everything is of the same value. That means you haven't really investigated. You know, as it says, it says, like, test all things, right? You know, you know, prove all things, right? Hold fast or hold firmly, you know, to what is true. So I'm not too sure if ones and ones have tested or prove all things, but you definitely know that this first statement here is true, that, you know, there are, right, as there are or as there be, you know, gods, right, many and lords many, as there be gods many and lords many. Hold on for a moment, my brothers. So actually, we can actually almost stop it right here and say what well, we just said to the sister. We sent this to her. See, even the Bible says there's God's many and Lord's many. Mm -hmm. See, even the Bible says that. But then it speaks for, it says just in general, right? And this is the objective perspective right here, right? This is the objective perspective that you find that most ones who call themselves Christians really don't have because they say they are defending the, the the verse six, but to us there is one God. Right? It says they didn't say one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and we in him, and you notice the word and that's a conjunction, and one Lord, right? One Adon, one Lord, right? Yeshua Ha Moshiach, coming from the Hebrew perspective and the original Aramaic. Right, you would say perspective, but a Hebraic perspective, but what, is, what they call Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Now, now, now notice one says it says, We are in him, in the one Elohim, right? The Father, Elohim Ha'ab, right? We are in him, and one Lord, right? One Adon, right? One Adon. Yeshua HaMoshiach, by whom, by him, by the one Lord, right? It says, are all things, and we by him. Notice the word by him is the G1223. And then if you notice up there where it says, and we in him, and we in him, the first part of verse six, it says in him is the G1519. The G1519 is ace, right? Into Right, to, toward, for, among is a primary preposition, like into, right? The the point reached or entered. Notice right there. And then we look at the G1223, and it says dia. Dia. Dia means through. Notice that dia means through. Through. 
it can have a sense of with or in, but through, by means of, right? Through, as the ground or reason, the reason, right? The reason by which something is or is not done. By reason of, on account of, because, for this reason, therefore, on account of, and you can go through it and it's a preposition, right? But you can see where it says through. It seems like the idea is through. Right through, right through him. So we go through the one Lord Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, to get to the destination, the one Elohim, Elohim Ha'ab, Elohim the Father, right? And notice what it says in verse 7. In verse 7 it says, How be it there is not in every man that knowledge. There is not in every man that gnosis. Look at that. They fight against the Gnostics. There's not in every man, right, that gnosis, right? You see, gnosis, knowledge, knowledge. It's all about knowledge, or, or the word science is connected to it. The word science is actually knowledge. So it's, notice what it says right there? There we prove our point. So everyone who might say that they are a Christian, right, there's not that particular knowledge. There's a belief, Right? And nothing wrong with belief in its proper context, objectively speaking. We all, people don't like to admit this, because it destroys their pseudo, pseudo-science idolatry. Right? But here's the true science right here. Science is knowledge, the act of knowing. The act of knowing. Because a lot of ones will say, as I just mentioned, that they'll say, well, there's, a, there's only one God. There's only one God. Does these verses say that there's only one God? No, these verses say that there, there be that are called gods. Mm -hmm. One's going to make a point about the call. Yeah, call gods. Because somebody says, well, these ones call on this name or that, that name or this idol or that idol. And that's their god, right? That are called gods. Whether in heaven, right? Whether it's the heavenly, you know, signs or the heavenly uh, hosts or whatnot like that. Or in earth, or something on earth, right? And notice what it says, as there be gods many and lords many. People, you see, it's a parenthetical there, right? But we can show you the Greek, but in the Greek, it's not a parenthetical. That's something the that translators did put some things in parentheses because of how it read or whatever ideas they had. But when we're studying, when we study to show ourselves approved and we get to the, the root text, that part right there is not a parenthetical. So some people would try to act like that was added in later on. No, the flow of it, you know, the flow of it shows it. What happened is that they added some of those things in parentheses because when translators in different church doctrine, dogmas, whoever, dogmatic ones, that kind of, you know, acknowledge the truth and they put it in a parenthetical to take it outside of that. Because everywhere else that we have studied these scriptures, right, even from the Greek, we do not find those parentheticals there. So therefore, the question is, why do you put those parentheticals there, right? As there be gods many and lords many. Just to prove this right here, we have the Greek. We have the Hebrew here and we have the Greek, right? We have the Greek. Where Where is it? Gay some... Um, Osper, Osper, I seen Deoi, Deoi, um, Poloi, Kai, Kuroi, Kurioi, Poloi, right? So here, right around here, where it brings out this right here, right? As there be a scene. Okay, let's go back to that again. Let's bring this up again. A scene. I'll highlight the part, right, where it says God's many and Lord's many. Notice that this is the Hebrew. Right? But there's no parenthetical there. Right? There's no parenthetical there. Right? There's no parenthetical there. But they put this following after the King James Version. Right? You see the NET. Right? But the New, the Hebrew doesn't have it there. New Testament Hebrew. Right? Doesn't really have those quotes there either. But people put those things like theologically there. Right? As you can see that right there. But the point is that it clearly says as there are many gods and many lords. We showed you in the Hebrew up here, as there are many gods and many, like what it says right here, it says this around right here, Yesh, Yesh Elohim Rabin, right? Wadonim, Wadonim Rabin. 
So Elohim, God's Rabim, many, Adonim, and, and Lord's Rabim. Rabim means enough, enough ones, right? Enough, enough ones. So to the basic question, right? To the basic question of what is God's name, first of all, we have to define, right? Exactly, well, what God, right? What God are we speaking of? You know, according to the terminology God, right? And we're not disputing this whole thing about the English. We can get into the English and the English is a, is a Frankenstein language and it's put together like this, so forth and so on. But then that will kind of defeat the purpose and the point if we're speaking in English, right? We're using this general terminology that often refers to what is worshipful or what is deified among people. Now, here you can see where it says 72 names of God. Right. You know, so now. So who is God? Right. So the sister, she, she responded and said, well, if someone asks, so to what I ask and what God we're talking about, there are many gods define God. I'll give you the name. You know, I think that's the best way when the question first comes up. Right. The best way. Right. Is basically what we say right here. Right. From this perspective, what God are you talking about? If there's people talking about God, God, this, what God's name, what God are you talking about? Right. There are many gods, but it's important to also state there are many gods. There are many gods. If you're asking me, what's God's name? Right. In 2023, with what the knowledge and awareness that we have of different religions, different peoples, past, present and all that. Right. Well, what God are we talking about? Right. There are many gods. Then yes, God is a English terminology, right? But then the majority of us right here are speaking English. Now, if we're speaking another language, <laughs> right? Then we can use that word. I did reference the Elohim term, right? Because from my perspective and many of I and I perspective, right? Royal Order Ethiopian Hebrews. This is where we trace, you know, certain theological, you know, um, roots. Right. Of what many of us, I'm not going to say all, I can't speak for other ones, but ones who are like minded with I and I, you know, Royal Order of Ethiopian Hebrews. Right. So what there that gives it a kind of a context that's putting it in, giving some points of reference. Right. But the sister said, well, if someone asks, what is the God? Now she puts the God full caps. Right. And there's a slash there. Right. Creator of creation. Mm. I could have asked her right here because she said the name, the name, right? Well, Hebraically, right? In the Hebrew, right? I can't say, people might say Elohim. People say Elohim is God's name. Well, that means you really don't know Hebrew. Because if you really know Hebrew, then you know that, well, Elohim, right? Elohim, let me see if we have this right here. That Elohim is not God's name. Right. If you do know Hebrew, right, those who know Hebrew or you're learning Hebrew, the thing you'll find out is that Elohim is not the God's name. Right. However, Elohim is a point of reference right, to the terminology in English that we call God. Right. This terminology. OK, I don't have one over here. I've been like collecting some of the some of the pictures into uh, kind of learn Hebrew. And we got to launch that, you know, Hebrew for Rastafari channel as well, because I thought we had it here. Maybe I'm missing over it. As you can see, I'm just going through. I want to zoom in on that so that ones can at least see how, you know, how it looks in in, in Hebrew. Well, we have this right here. We'll use this right here. Is this Right. Is this term right here? Is this term right here? It's not it's not super clear. Right. And it's kind of stylized right there. But that's Elohim. Right. That's Elohim right there. So Elohim, we find that in Genesis chapter one, but it's not his name. Right. It's his attribute. Right. It's his attribute because there's a point that the sister makes later on. And we have right here. We have Elohim. Right? I was looking for one from that other channel from that other site. As you can see right here, this is in the beginning, God created. Be-Reshith, with wisdom or in wisdom. Reshith is she, 
See, this is a thing that people don't get from the English. So Reishith is a divine feminine principle known as wisdom. So in wisdom, Reishith, the head, feminine, right? Bara, Bara, created, right? With wisdom. Ein Sof means without end, right? Ein Sof, the without the ending, without end, created. Elohim. Now here, this is kind of breaking it down a little bit Kabbalistically, a little bit more on a studied perspective for those who do have a kind of a groundation and a a a um, a Hebrew perspective towards study. Mm -hmm. Cause when the sister asked what she asked, I knew she's coming from a biblical perspective, right? But I didn't want to bring in the Bible as of yet so my 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 response to that when she said if someone asks what is the god right the god right the god the creator of creation and name now from a royal order ethiopian hebrew a hebrew perspective and we say hebrew we're not speaking of so much just like the 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 carnal or the fleshy or just the natural but the spirit in man Right, the true Hebrew transcendental spirituality from the ancient to the present time. The God of the Hebrews, the God of the Bible, right, the God of Jesus' name, right, his name, right, is Y H W H, right, Y H W H. And I, I use Y H W H. You say, well, why are you using Y H W H? Well, let's go right here for a moment. This was an interesting meme. I think we'll highlight this particular meme right here, right? This particular meme right here. So God's Hebrew name, right? Or Elohim's, right? The Elohim, the Hebrew Elohim name, right? The the Elohim of the Hebrews name, right? Yod Hey Wah Hey, right? Y H W H. In some places, you'll find that some will say Yahweh, and there's this whole reasoning of which is the proper way to pronounce it and that also is due to a lack of knowledge remember what it said in the other verse it said not not all have this knowledge we showed you that array not all have this knowledge let's let's bring that up again as well not all have this knowledge it's in verse uh, seven how be it there is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol right what's the idol right a dolon the a dolon e dolon a dolon is the image the likeness whatever represents the form of an object either something real or imaginary use of the shades of the departed so forth so on image but basically it's the word for image right in the context of image for worship the implications like a heathen or a non-hebrew Right, Elohim. And we said the Hebrews, we're connecting that also in the further revelation manifestation with the children of Israel, specifically of the Bible. And then later on, we get to the New Testament with the Yehudim, with the Jews or the Judahites. As Yeshua says, ye worship that which you know not. We know we worship salvation of the Yehudim. Right? Now, the plural, right, it could be singular or plural. Right? Remember we said there's many gods and lords, however many gods and lords. So with conscience, and what is conscience? Right? 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 Sune desis. Sune desis. Consciousness. We talk about consciousness. We talk about consciousness. Right? Conscience. Right? But conscience is that consciousness of anything. Right? The soul. Some people refer to consciousness residing in what is called the soul, the suke, the psyche, as distinguishing between what is morally good and bad. What is morally good and prompting to do. Now, this is like a, a way of bringing out a sense of the basic word conscience. Right? Right? Co, co perception. Right? What you perceive. On a certain level, spiritually, this is a certain level of physics. On a spiritual level so you know how they say physics you know what the observer and what is observed and you know the interaction between the observer and observed according to the science of physics right sunedo sunedo but sunedo getting to the root of sunedo literally 
means to see together with others, the conscience, to see having seen in one's mind. So it's been the mind's eye, the first eye called the third eye, right? The mind's eye with oneself to understand, to perceive, to comprehend, but notice to know together, to know with another, to know in one's mind or with oneself. Now, conscience, if you break down the English, cone means with, and science means knowing, with knowing, right? With knowing, right? To see completely. But when we break it down to the Greek, it's like to literally, it's to see completely. Seen, sight, to be aware, to understand. And in that sense, to be conscious. See, all these things that we talk about now are actually contained in a real studied perspective of the Bible. We have to be willing to, you know, um, study the Bible, break it down, and, and build it up to just understand what it is. Most ones, they enter the Bible with some preconceived notion. And this is one thing that I have to give thanks to even my earthly, you know, parents, that they let me know that the Bible is an important book, but they did not dogmatically or in any other way force a set of beliefs, I'll say overtly, they express their beliefs, right, and covertly practice these things. But it wasn't like, you know, plus my father, you know, was more of, you know, he got more into like Islamic orientation, but he still referenced the Bible because he grew up with this Bible thing, you know what I mean? And, um, but he did have his critiques. He had his criticisms, you know, he had his questions. Let me point it out. And so these questions I took on, also as okay sometimes I, I agreed with his his perspective right i agreed with a lot of my father's perspective my mother she practiced what she practiced but there wasn't that like making me a christian though i went to church i could not really say in the sense of christian i really was a christian maybe later on you know like you're around people and you want to go along with it so you know you say some things and you try you know to see how this you know like you try it on but my real knowledge of the bible was came in when I started to study and seek, you know, who I am, a black person, black man, African, Ethiopian connection, studying Ethiopia and the Israelites and the Hebrew and all of that connection caused me to begin to start to try to figure things out for myself, you know, to be able to analyze it, take it apart, you know, also to study it from a non-emotional perspective because I wasn't like like bought or sold on any particular thing. For the most part, you know, I was ignorant of what was really in the Bible. I heard verses, you hear people talk about verses. There's verses that people always be saying a lot, like God is good, you know, and other things. Some things I found out wasn't even biblical verses. There were things that I always thought were biblical verses that, and I find out that, that most Christians, a lot of things that they say is not really Bible. This is what I found from experience, from first just experiencing being around, you know, you know, when I say song and dance Christians, I mean, it, it was a good time. It was a good experience. It's almost like a little party in a sense, you know what I mean? You know, and heard different things preached. People gave testimonies, how they overcame things. And all that was a good experience. I have to say my experience was, when I say good in a sense, that, you know, what I've heard from other folks you know, with, with with religious people. So when I say my parents were religious, I when we well, my mother in the sense that she did the church thing. You know, she preached and she went around. But how she was a mother, you know, and as a mother to me, she would just declare what she believed. You know what I mean? And might point to a verse or quote a verse or whatever. But she would give me her expounding of this verse so forth and so on. But I didn't know where the verse was. It wasn't like she opened the book and pointed to this and I had to read it out and all that. It wasn't that, you know, and I felt a way about that at first. You know, I felt like, oh, she should have. But then I got to recognize if she did, I might have some of the same, you know, problems that a lot of our people have. You know what I mean? Because they were made to believe a certain denominational, a certain kind of sectarian denominational belief. And that's kind of like that, you know, for some with conscience of the idol, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I went into that right there, not to go off on just a little bit of my testimony. But to this hour, they eat it as a thing offered to an idol and their conscience, 
Their what? Their conscience being weak. Look at that. See, conscience, if we look up conscience, conscience, in fact, I got to do this right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Let, let, let me go over here. Let me take this out. Let me go over here. I got to just show you this right here. Don't, don't take my word. Well, take my word for it. Trust what I'm saying. But what we're going to do is verify, right? Trust, but verify, right? For yourself. I'll say trust. I'm not going to speak like other folks say, well, I don't know what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. That means they haven't studied it enough to really tell you anything. That Look, look what it says right here. Here we go, conscience, right? Just to bring it up, conscience. Because conscience is an important word. We talk about knowledge and science. Here we go. Conscience. 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 Right now, here it says Latin, right? Cone. Remember I said cone means with? And scary. Scary, scary, right? Scary, right? Scary. Right? Or scary, some might say. But really, ancient Latin, scary, to know. With no. Right? Cone, scary. Right? Consient. Right? Being privy to. Right? With knowing. Conscientia. Right? Conscientia. Right? French. Conscience. The inner thoughts or knowledge. Right? Being privy to. Right? But literally, it means with knowing. Right? Let's go to the etym online. I'd like to get to the etymology. The faculty of knowing, they say what is right. But really what it means is the faculty of knowing. Right? The context, you could say what is right if you're getting into that right there. But really, as we showed you from the Bible, knowing what is right and what is wrong. It almost goes back to the first story in Moshe's first book, right? Moses, the first book is ascribed to Moses, right? The whole garden, right? The man has become as one of us, right? To do what? To know, right? So conscience. That's why some may interpret that the whole garden of Eden incident points out in a kind of an ancient sociology, right? The dawning of conscience when humanity got to know. Right? And what did they get to know? Right? They got to know the good and the evil. Right? They got to know the beneficial and the harmful, to put it another way. Now, this is circa 1200, faculty of knowing what is right, especially, right? Originally, especially in Christian ethics. So, those who are Christians and studying Bible and theology and this and that, this is what they got out of it. And here's how it formed into the Western Gentile. You know, from Roman Catholic Europe to Protestant to the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant to nowadays to majority of what we have all over the world. There were other Christian traditions, but they were kind of spread far and wide. We're talking about what many of us are been exposed to over these 400 years. It comes from this sort of tradition right here. So we got to get to know this sort of tradition. Later, awareness that acts for which one feels responsible do or do not conform to one's idea of right. So you see, first it came from this Christian ethic based on what they were studying in the Bible versus like we just went to the conscience. Notice what it says, whose conscience were weak. So what it was weak, their faculty of knowing their faculty of science because they were scientifically weak. And I'm using the word science because the word science gets lost in counterfeit and pseudo religion, right? And, and a lot, when I talk about counterfeit Christianity, this is what we're talking about. And it's not just talking about one so called denomination, but a particular way that ones and ones, you know, don't even get to know these connections that are biblical. Right? The faculty of knowings. That science is right there in the Bible. And it's the same word science that comes down now to nowadays times what they call science, what they call science today. Right? So later on, it was a faculty of knowing what is right in Christian ethics. But as a word, conscience is the faculty of knowing. Period. What is beneficial, what is harmful, what is good, what is evil, what is oh, what is ra'a. Right? Later on, it became like awareness to say kind of knowledge knowing right that the acts for which one feels responsible do or do not conform to one's ideal of right so now it's putting it in other so later on this psychological sense of consciousness that we 
refer to today. So many people, when they talk about consciousness, it is that so-called evolution or devolution of it, right? Later on in the 14th century, more generally to a sense of fairness or justice, a moral sense. That's where it gets caught up in the woods. This is where the confusion comes from. When we go back to even the early Christian ethics time, although they were applying it to what was they considered to be Christian, right? Especially from a Eurocentric Europe and Western Europe perspective, right? It was knowing. It was knowledge. It was awareness. But then people were like, well, awareness for what? Well, awareness for, for right and for wrong. And then, you know, a sense of fearness. Well, was that really right? But notice what they put in. They put into the definition feelings feels response there's nothing there in what we read bringing this word conscience to the fore right where it talked about that see it's awareness of knowing what is right and what is wrong or what is good and what is evil what is beneficial and what is harmful period period right but it comes down to a root idea according to what we were pointing to of knowing now, as you can see this later on from French, uh, joint knowledge of something, knowing something together, to know well. But notice down here, I like when we get to the late Latin over here. Notice, it's to know, right? And it's to know something well, right? With knowing. With knowing, the idea of thoroughly, right? From com, C-O-M, later on, con, thoroughly knowing, right? Thoroughly knowing something, Right? not having a vague knowledge. So most ones, when they talk about they were Christian or went to church, right, or this or that, ones had a vague knowledge, right? I have to admit that my knowledge, at least of the Bible, I knew what people did in, uh, say, uh, for example, a Pentecostal church. You know what I mean? I knew what went on in, a, in at least this kind of a Pentecostal, the different kinds, you know? We gotta keep that in mind too, right? With knowing, right? Notice that it says with knowing. The Latin word is probably a loan word by Greek, synedesis. You see what it says there? This is, what we, this is why we go to the biblical and then we break down the word. Notice something. We went through now the non-Bible biblical way. They're going to say probably a loan word. It is a loan word. Right? It is connected. We understand ancient Latin, ancient Roman, and Greek relationship. They, they idolized the Greek. They thought the Greek were very wise in every way, except in law. Right? So the Latin, the Romans, they basically adopted a lot of the Greek stuff, except for law. Law was an area where, where the Romans were different than the Greeks, but otherwise they really looked up to Greek culture. You know what I mean? Um, the sense development is perhaps via to know along with others, right? What is right or wrong, to know something right or wrong within oneself, know in one's own mind. You, you see that? To know in one's mind. The last part of this, I think, really brings the idea well. Let's see how much I can, I can crop right here, right? It's this last part that is really very important. Why? When it says the Latin word is probably, we know it is. Here's the proof of it. Let's go to the other exhibit. Let's just go to this other exhibit real quick right here. And we get to this other exhibit right here. Notice this verse. How be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. Notice the word knowledge. Why? There is not that knowledge. The gnosis. Once again, gnosis. You see gnosis? Knowledge signifies in general intelligence, understanding, knowledge, all right? It's a basic word for knowledge, gnosko, to learn, to know, to come to know, to get a knowledge of, to perceive, in that sense, to feel, to become known, to become acquainted with. There's a lack of acquaintance. There's not this acquaintance. We're still talking about the God thing. That's where it all begins. You talk about God and there's this one God and everybody's God is the same God. All that's nonsense. From rationally and not just rationally, but more, more than that, objectively speaking. Right? If I speak subjectively, then I'm gonna say, well, well, the God is the God of Israel, is the is the God of the Hebrews, it, it, royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. Th that's where I'm gonna come from. Right? But then I can back that up, at least with the points of reference, knowledgeably, 
right? Even though other people, when, when I, if I say Bible, other people are going to think, oh, Bible, like they either know or don't know the Bible. Remember what the verse says? It says, for some with conscience of the idol, right? That's whatever image. For example, if I say, yeah, um, Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ, first thing people are going to think about is Cesar Borgia's blonde, blonde hair, blue-eyed, white guy, so forth and so on, because that's the conscience of the idol. That's the conscience of the idol. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so when I read Hannah Selassie speaking about Jesus Christos, and they say, well, Jesus Christos is the way they say Jesus Christ, right? But then immediately we got to find out that from the real Ethiopian tradition, because the church today is the Derg church. The church today, the Orthodox church today, right, is apostate. Is a, has a lot of apostate Roman Catholicism have, have jacked that, has taken over. People don't want to say that. You know, I'm not saying all, not all, not all, not all. Remember, we say there's a true church and a professing church. That's a fact. Since 1975, 74, 75, right? That revolution or rebellion against Haile Selassie was also rebellion against the ancient, the true ways, right? That's all we'll say on that, right? Because that's a whole other reasonment, right? For some with conscience of the idol. So if I say Jesus Christ, most people are going to think about the idol. They're going to get these, these, these idols in their heads, right? In other words, they're going to get these images, you know, these pictures that people say, this is Jesus, this is God, this is God's son, this is the Savior, this is this, this is that, right? For some with the conscience of the idol to this hour, right, eat as a thing offered to an idol. They eat. Now, remember, eating is literally we eat you know for food and nutrient right but then there's also the next level of eating you know that right there's the next level of eating you know what i mean there's the next level of taking something in to eat right and their conscience look what it says and their conscience being weak their conscience being what right asthenes 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 it's weak it's infirm feeble you know when they talk about like feeble-minded from a religious, from a knowledgeability of the scriptures. Remember everything about the Jesus Christ in the Bible, he's always saying like, is it not written or it was written, you know, or he's talking about these new guys were corrupting the old ways. That's what he was talking about, the old ways, the truth, basically, right? <laughs> right, strengthless. It doesn't have no strength in it. It's feeble. And it's feeble in the various ways, right? They're feeble, feeble in their knowledge of the scripture, you know? Because sometimes when we're teaching on something, we're saying, well, this is what the Bible says, the, the Hebrew, the Greek, this is what it's actually reading here, right? Ones are then going to say, well, what about what the, I heard a preacher say that, I heard a preacher say that, right? What you heard a preacher say, did we say the same thing? Did we just teach you and show you that in the scripture? Did the preacher show you that in the scripture? So automatically, you got to go check that preacher on what that is right there. You know, so sometimes it's like because they have consciousness of the idol, you know what I mean? They are not able to get the teaching, the real teaching, because they've, they've already accepted consciously or unconsciously the idol. That's why when the point came to, you know, what is the name of God, right? We had to answer that same way. What God are you talking about or we're talking about what god we're talking about there are many gods define the god and i'll give you the name like if you can define the god in some way you know of what people or what time or i mean what, what are you talking about i mean even in that among africans right who are into traditional religion now ones might see similarities of their gods but different names and then you might try to say it's all the same god you can go ahead and do that. We're not going to do that, right? We're not going to do that because it's not fact, right? It's not fact, right? Like the verse before says, there is none other God but one. But see, that is speaking to those who are main, those who credit, those who believe or believe, who, who credit, who trust. The word belief is like credit. It's like a credit system. I don't put a lot of, I know about other gods of other lands and other peoples, but I don't put a lot of credit in them, right? I do know about them, so I can point to objective facts about them, 
right? But I don't credit them as I credit, you know, the Elohim and Ab, right, of, of my Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. This is, this is what I declare. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that the next man is going to declare that, you know, but can he back? Does he have any back at it? Right? Especially from the script. If people want to go out. I, one thing I noticed about a lot of the pro-blacks and on the so-called pseudo-consciousness, they all act like they know the Bible. But what it is, it 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 is like verse versical debates. It's a versical debate. So I don't know if one's know about versical. A versical is like sometime in church, they might quote a couple of verses from a song. They're not going through the whole song. You know what I mean? They're not going through the whole song. They just are taking like a verse. Right, the area of the psalm, and they're making that the refrain and everything. You know, like you could take a portion of a psalm or something like that, you know, and they make another psalm or they kind of adapt, they kind of adapt some area of scripture. But that goes with their theology. It's like some hold to one verse in the Bible, and this is why they believe. Mm -hmm. One or two or three verses, main verses. But between those two or three verses, it's all ignorance. It's all ignorance. Right? I'm not just saying among the so-called Christian, but even many ones who are, they call themselves Rastas. It's like a Rasta fandom. Ones are in a Rasta fandom on a certain level. Not because this is where they want to be, right? But they never got past, you know, the basic ignorance. You remember what's about the conscience being weak, right? Being strengthless. That strength in the word, right? Because what God we're talking about. Okay, the God, the, the, the creator of creation. See, there was a good response my sister gave, right? And I give thanks to that response. And I kind of know in, now here I have to say this, in the spirit in me, right? In the, in the, in the, 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 the spirit, how can I put this in a term? In the intelligence, that which is not perceptible like materially, Right, that you know, intelligent knowledge in me, and even intuition. I I know where, cause, you know, me and her reason. She's a Rastafari. She Orthodox, you know, Ethiopian. So you know, I understand where she may come from, you know, on certain things. You know what I mean? But here's my response. My response, right, based on the Rastafari order, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the royal order, the, the God of the Hebrews, right is the God of, I said the Bible, let me put this a little more correctly, the Hebrew Bible, I got to say this, of the Hebrew Bible, <laughs> right? And of, of, of the Yehudi, the, the Judeans, like Yeshua, like Yeshua is a Jew, right? right? Just because he didn't get along with some other Jews because he called them out on all their fakery, their fraud, their pseudo. Yeshua called out the other Jews as basically being pseudo, especially the other rabbis and leaders. And he even... In the Gospels, there's a lot of points he makes. There's a lot of points that are made to show, right, the discrepancy, right? Basically, he was saying, Yeshua was saying, you're calling his name, right? But you're not doing his will and you're contradicting his evidence, the scripture, and you're making the scripture void. And that's how the Bible is for most Christians. The Bible is void. Yeah, it is a couple of points of reference. It's a kind of a big book. Let's admit that there. Right. And in America, in the Western Gentile world, since the Bible was taken out of like uh, education, you know, what I mean, like one time the Bible was the education system began because a lot of the Christians in the Americas and other places thought it was necessary to educate. You know, what I mean, thought it was necessary. Give thanks, Honorable Priest Isaacs. He just gave a kind of heads up right there. I think it has Baba Heru speaking on Rastafari. So God's Hebrew name. Right, God's Hebrew name. Right, that's the answer. So I also said to her, I would say Exiavia, Exiavia. Now Exiavia is said to be the primordial name of Yahweh, of of Jehovah. Right, before the worlds and everything. Then this is going into some Ethiopic, ancient Ethiopic teaching. You know what I mean? But that right there is not really germane. Everybody's not able to look like you know find the evidence. You know the evidence for that. When I came across this meme. I said, this is a good meme, right? Where it says God's Hebrew name. Let me upgrade it. The Elohim, right? The Elohim of the the the, the Hebrews, right? <laughs> the God. Remember, even in the Exodus narrative, 
You remember in the Exodus narrative where it talked about the God of the Hebrews? Let me bring this out to y'all right here. Let me bring this out right here. We're going to keep this hopefully within an hour or so. Right? You know, hopefully tight and right. Right? Let's go to the God, the God of the Hebrews. My God of the Hebrews. Right? It should come up of the Hebrews. We go to God of the Hebrews. There's six verses that say the God of the Hebrews. Right? The God of the Hebrews. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and ye shall say to him, now this is a translation, right? The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, right? This is the first mention of the God of the Hebrews. Now, for those who we always like to fact check the translation, you know, so we go to right here. This is just what we do in our studies with Shamu, right? Lik Oleka, Ua Batata, we Zikne Israela Ilamaleka Mitzrayi, Wa Amar Tem Elio, Yahua Elohe Ha Ibrahim, Ha Ibrahim. Right? The Elohe, the Elohim of Ha, Ha, Ibrahim, of the Hebrews, not of Ibrahim, of Hebrews, but of Ha, Ibrahim, or some might say Ha, Ibrahim, Ha, Ibrahim, modern Hebrew, Ha, Ibrahim, but ancient pointing Ha, Ibrahim, right? Nikra El Aleno, Nikra Aleno, Weata, Nelka, Na, Dereka. Shiloshet Yamin, three days. Shiloshet, Shalasha, Salasa, Shiloshet Yamin, Ba Midbar, in the mid in the wilderness, with Niza Beha, and we will sacrifice Nizbeha, 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 right? La Yahua Eloheinu, and we will sacrifice to Yahua, Yahua, right? Jehovah. Right, Eloheinu, our Elohim. Remember, we we showed from the Corinthians verse right there, right about the gods and the lords and the lords and the gods, or the gods and the lords. First Corinthians, chapter eight, verse five. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, and we know that even from Mitzrayim or the Smatawi. Right, the Smatawi referred to as Kemet, right? Hekapita, right? The two lands called Egypt, that they had many gods, right? And and lords, there were many, you know, there, there was a Netaru, the Necheru, Necheru or Netaru, right? There was the Netar singular and there was a Netaru, right? And the Netert and goddesses, right? And there were Nebs. Right, nebs and, and, and lords, right? Different kings were lords. There were different ones who had those sort of titles, right? And they also had it for the divine, whether one will call them principles or not, they had it for the principalities, right? So how the people viewed it is according, generally speaking, to this God terminology. But in the Hebrew, the term is Elohim. So here it becomes clear right here in this one verse, all the identification, if you now want to study it from a biblical perspective, is brought forward, right? Yahuwah Elohe ha Ibrahim, right? Yahuwah, Jehovah, right? Yahuwah Elohe the Elohim, ha Ibrahim. Ha Ibrim of the Ibrim, Ha Ibrim of the Hebrew. Some say there's there's no H there. There is an H there, but they don't know Hebrew. Right? They're talking about some Greek. They're talking about some Greek Septuagint translation. They're thinking that, well, actually Hebrew is from the Greek. No, you that's foolish. You know, that's errata, errata, that's erroneous. Right? So right here, this verse right here, as well as these other six verses. You know what I mean? These other five verses, right? Exodus, let's go right here again. Exodus, right, five and three. And they said, right, the Elohe ha Ibrim, 
hath met with us that the Elohim, right? So what the Hebrews, right? The Bnei Yisrael, the Hebrews were declaring is that our nature, our noter, right? Our nature, netter, netter, right? Is different, right? Than your netaru, right? Our netaru, right? Is different than your netaru. Our netter or nature is different than your nature. This is what it's saying. It has met with us. And so just let us go for a moment. Give us like a holiday, a break, right? And we're going to pray three days journey, right? To, you know, we pray you. We're going to go three days journey into the desert. We're going to sacrifice to Yahweh Eloheinu, right? To Yahweh, right? And what did Paro Per A'a, right? The Sutanet, Sutanbet, the Melech, and the Great House say, they said, we don't know this Yahuwah, right? This is not a part of the pantheon of accepted, you know, Neteru, Necheru, right here. So we don't, we don't know this, this Yahuwah, right? Well, who is this Yahuwah, right? Who, who is this one, right, that you were talking about, right? That's why they said, notice what the Israelites said, lest he fall upon us. They're saying if we don't go and do our rites and rituals and worship, Right? He's going to fall on us with a pestilence or with a sword. It's going to be bad for us. So notice how the whole Exodus narrative, this is the part that they don't really talk about. They talk about all these other things, right? Because their conscience being weak is defiled. They're dealing with, they're dealing with the idol, as we mentioned in the first Corinthians 8 and what is it? 8 and 7, right? In the 8 and 7 verse, it talk about their conscience because of the idol. You know, they don't have this gnosis, this gnosis, right? They don't have this da'at, right, this knowledge. You know, they don't have this scientia, scientia. They don't have this scientia, they don't have this knowledge, right? And therefore, because of that, their consciences are weak. Because remember, conscience is linked to science. Science is the word for knowledge, Right? Because of what ones know. And most ones that tell you, oh, they they were Christian or they, they, they were Christian. They, most ones didn't have a really good Bible knowledge. A lot of them didn't know nothing about the Bible. Right? What it was was like church politics. You know, and the politics in their church. Right? Became more important than really learning and knowing anything. Because people don't really do no Bible club. People don't have time for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, most people don't seem to have time for those sort of things. But that was one of the main things. If you study, right, the, the history and some of the traditions of the early so-called Christians, they were Nazarenes. Regardless of the name, even if the Nazarenes were called Christians, they still practiced certain things. Right? They practiced certain things. Most of what churches is song and dance or it's a guilt trip. You know, most of what it is, it's a, it's a lot of song and dance and it's a guilt trip. And based on what I'm reading and what I've studied in the scripts, this is one that I give thanks over the last several years, being able to break down and analyze the scripture, right, from a non-emotional feelings perspective. This is why sometimes I like taking on some of these kind of questions, you know, about certain things. You know, I hope ones are able to take on the answers, you know what I mean? So I said exiavi here, right, using the Ethiopian nomenclature, right, exiavi, the sustainer, right, within the more Ethiopic sense, according to the documents, the research, the studies, right, according to that tradition, studying what the teaching is. You remember what he said about Yeshua? They said, how did Yeshua have this knowledge? Where did he get these teachings? You know, because he didn't he didn't study it amongst them. He didn't go to their universities or whatnot like that. But he knew what my were the true things. Like he said to them, he said, Y'all have the keys of the kingdom, but because y'all don't go in, you know what I mean? Y'all don't really live the life. You know what I mean? And even what you're teaching ain't right. That's what Yeshua was basically saying to them. You know? And he wasn't just condemning like Jews in the general sense, but in the specific sense of their leadership. Right? And so my sister, she responded when I said the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Bible, the God of Jesus is Yahweh, right? Yahweh, some may say, right? And the, the whole thing about the name, like, like which was the right pronunciation, right? The name is really like a verb in a sense. Not to even get into all of that. It's the interface. You know, I don't want to even go into all of what the Shem is. What is the Shem? 
you know, from a real Hebraic perspective. First, we're going to just address this. But she said that this is what she said. And also, now she's, she added on to that, said also others have many different names. Others have many different names. Then I responded to that and said, Jah is Yah in Psalm 68 verse 4, right? In Psalm 68 verse 4, right? Let me put Jah and then let me, let's put name here, right? By his name, Jah, right? And here we go down here, interesting. Interesting. We're scrolling through all this. It's still about glorious name. Here we go right here. This is the verse that many of us as Rastafari, at least in my tribe, right? This is the first, some of the first knowledge that I was put up on, so to speak, right? Psalm 68 verse 4, sing to Elohim, right? Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name. So you see what it says? Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name. But it didn't say that Elohim is his name. Sing to Elohim. You see it right there, Elohim, right? Sing to the powers, right? Sing to his name. So he is a singularity, but his attribute is plural, right? Some say in majesty, but is the powers, right? He is the God of gods, Elohe Elohim, high. Ha Elohim. Extol him. Notice it says it didn't say them. It said extol him. So the Hebrews was using the term Elohim, and they knew that it also applied to other people's gods, but they're saying with him, he is the gods. He is the powers. Literally it comes down to the mighty ones, the powers. It's like the powers that are uh, brought out by the various attributes. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. So here's the KJV, classic KJV, Jah, right? And rejoice before him. Well, we get Jah. Here we have Yah, Yah. Look, it says Yah, right, is Yahuwah, or Jah is Jehovah in the shortened form. It's the shortened form of the name. And it's very simple. You have, I hear people arguing about this, you know, from a kind of an English Gentile and not, and not a very studied English perspective. When you get to a certain point of the English, you're going to recognize they're talking about that this is the best we could bring out in English. But we were trying to understand the Hebrew over here. So eventually, one would try to understand the Hebrew. So Jah is Jehovah or Yah is Yahuwah. They say the proper name of the one true God. Right? And now from a Hebrew perspective... Right, royal order or otherwise, this is basically a confession of faith. That 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 basically is unified. You know what I mean? We have Jah right here, and right here we have Yah. Right, we have Yah, and Yah come from Yahweh. Right, Yahweh. Remember that the J in German has a Y sound, and the V in German has a W sound. The existing one. Right, you know, and then we can get into this right here, the existing one, so forth and so on. This, and then they say Jew, Jewish, but th that Jewish thing is also a superimposition. It was the Hebrews. We clearly showed you in the Bible where it says the Hebrews, the God of the Hebrews, right? So we get to find that he's identified as the God of the Hebrews. Right, the same one who is in the in the first book called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Hebrew Trinity. Right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then summed up, right, as the God of the Hebrews. Right? And they said that Yahweh, right? The short form, really, Yah is the savior form. If you study the Hebrew scriptures, you'll find that Yah is like the savior form. Whenever they use the term Yah within the scripts, it's like calling on the Savior name. I think that's just very important to point that out, the Savior name, right? So there's a meaning in even the short form. But when you don't, when you don't have that knowledge, see, it goes back to that verse that we brought up, that knowledge. So then I said to her, I said, well, according to the Ethiopian Hebrews, I wouldn't say many names. I would say many attributes or attributional names. You know what I mean? There's many attributional names. Now we can get into that in Exodus. It's revealed in Exodus where it says the Lord God gracious. Right? Let's go over here. The Lord God. Um, let's see. The Lord. Uh, where, where's the Lord? Now we're using Lord here because that's, that's the Gentiles. Right? That's, that's how the English 
right? Gracious. Um, let, me, let me put this right here. Boom. There we go right here. There, there we go right here, right? Here we go right here, right? In Exodus 34 and 6, and Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, El, El. Now we have El here, El, right? El, right? El is the root. It's like Hail, Hail. When we study the etymology, the African Shemitic etymology, we have El or Ha'el, the El, Hail, power in, in Elohim, right? Elohim, right? Merciful and gracious. So these are all attributes. Rahum, Rahum, which means merciful, compassionate. Rahum, right? So who is he who be who he be? That's what the name brings out. Who is he who be? Like we say, it is what it is, right? No, wonder why we like to say it is what it is. Well, he be who he be, right? The Elohe ha Ibrim. Right? Who is he? He is the El. He is the, the power, the mighty one. Right? He is the merciful one. He is the gracious one. Right? He is a rekapayim. Right? A rekapayim. Interesting, this word long suffering literally is long nose because it has a sense of taking a breath. You know what I mean? Sometimes ones and ones who know how to manage their anger and keep themselves calm know it's all in that breathing. That long suffering is like like long nose, like one take a breath. You know, you take a breath, calm down, calm down, take a breath. This is the sense when we start to get into the beauty of the of the idiom of the African Shemitic, the Hebrew, and abundant, abundant in goodness. Rab, right? Rab, Rab, or some say Rab, Rab, right? Chesed, Chesed, Chesed is an attribute too, right? Goodness, faithfulness, right, kindness, and emet, emet, like emet till, emet means truth or firmness, faithfulness. So here, there's like 13, many have counted 13 attributes in Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 to verse 7, right? Verse 6, verse 7, Exodus chapter 34, where Yahuwah revealed his backward parts. Now, this all links with the Kabbalah, Kabbalah. Actually, when you look at the Kabbalah, you're looking at the backward parts, right? And we see the connection with these particular attributes. So his name will come out to mean like he who be who he be, the existent one. He who is who he is. He, he be who he be, right? Then we notice this right here that we'll share before we seal up right here, right? Because the sister had mentioned to me, yeah, creator of creations should be a good answer too. And I kind of agree with her, you know, on a certain level, you know what I mean? Although people might go to different, you know, um, uh, rites or rituals of different peoples. Remember how we're linking Yahuwah with the God of the Hebrews. That's why for the New Testament, so-called Nazarene or Christian, the epistle to the Hebrews is that link that wraps it around. Because everything in the epistle to the Hebrews is linking, right, to the real God and Father, Elohim Ha'ab. So I agree with this one here. So that I learned more about the Bible. I would say the Hebrew Bible, this is my way of like, like, uh, meaning, crediting this statement. As I learn more about the Bible, it seems unwise to attempt to translate the divine name of our Creator to another language. I want to say to translate, I would say even worse than that is to change. What they did in the, the, the English Bibles is in a few places they put Jehovah, right? Now, Jehovah, one might say is a poor or a good. That's a whole other argument right there, right? We saw this right here, right, where the one went here, right? Um, well, we're not speaking Hebrew, right? Generally speaking, the Gentiles were not speaking Hebrew. I would not so much strike them out, but they also cause confusion among many ones and ones, right? These two names might cause confusion. Actually, in Greek, it is not Y-H-W-H. That is kind of incorrect, this particular meme here, right? In Greek, it, it will be I-H, right? O-H, something like that. It cannot, Greek cannot bring out, Greek it doesn't appear in the Greek Bible because Greek does not have the letters necessary, 
It doesn't really have the proper letters to bring out the proper sound of the full name. You know what I mean? Of the full name. So this one basically is saying, well, it's in Hebrew, but don't want to like, like limit themselves maybe to a certain English writing, right? As we show right here, some of the names, some might say Yahweh, right? And we're not one of those uh, pharisaical Christians or pharisaical like, um, you know, name people. There's some people who are really pharisaical about the name and it kind of just makes me chuckle a little bit because it, when I understand what Yeshua, you know what I mean? what the rabbi of rabbis was really doing, you know, with those in his time, you know, concerning, you know, what was going wrong, you know, it's kind of very interesting because that's what we have almost like today too. Like some might even prefer Yah because they don't understand the Hebrew well enough. I have to say this respectfully. There's ones that don't understand the Hebrew well enough, right, who might only hold to the Yah, Right, and the thing about it is that most of them can't even admit they don't understand. Like, I, there's things I didn't un understand. That's why I went through, you know, a diligent years long, you know, and still involved in the study and also going over certain conclusions, putting certain, you know, like, um, like putting my own conclusions to the test. So, so I think that this means this like this. Does it really? And going over that in the scripts, you know, a simple way. Yah, it would be a simple way, right? But Yahweh, you know, Yahweh, uh, I, I, I'll get into those those aspects of it because we've heard and read a lot of different things and we share sometimes a lot of different memes for some different, you know, how do we get Yah from Yahweh, right? Actually, the, the, the V should be a W. It's only because the European Jews right that because they come from a germanic and also the germanic translations into english even when we look at jehovah it wasn't pronounced jehovah according to the first translators it was yahuwah 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 which brings out my almost a perfect you know rendering almost right of what we have you know what we have in the hebrews and even with the pointing then people talk about the pointing and everything else We've dug into that as well. There is a lot of truth that, yes, it said that some ancient manuscripts were unpointed, but this doesn't mean that the people did not know, know these things. Remember, this was amongst the Hebrews. It wasn't something that was public. It had been made public through the, you know, post-70 AD, you know, and with what went on with so-called the Nazarene movement and then later on the Christianity. You know, and this is where a lot of it gets counterfeited. Like Yeshua himself or Robeno, Robeno, he said it. He said that many shall come in my name, you know, and say, Lord, Lord, and do all these things. And we see almost, you know, more than a thousand years, some say 2000, but especially over the past 400 plus years, this coming in Jesus name. Because other people wasn't saying Jesus because that way of saying it would not have been in existence before say four or five hundred years ago you know for some obvious etymological reason you know so the sister also said you know some people just need something anything to argue about yeah but they're arguing about things as we mentioned before that their conscience is weakened right is weakened let's go over here just one more time right here and seal up with this i know we went a little bit over you know, the hour, let's go to Lord's, Lord's, God's, God's, right? Right, and even here, notice right here, Deuteronomy, those three verses, right? Deuteronomy 10 and 17. For Yahweh, your Elohim, right, is the Elohe, Elohim, is the God of gods. Adonai, Adonim, is the Lord of Lords. So remember what it says down here, right? If we go down here to 1 Corinthians, Right, Rabbi Shaul, the apostle to the Gentiles, the apostle Paul, he writes to the community in Corinth in that, that neighborhood, that area. You know how we would talk about repping your, your hood and everything? Well, that was those in that hood, Corinthian, right? He says, for though there be that are called, right, that are called Elohim, 
whether in heaven or in earth. He didn't even go like the Old Testament sometimes speaking about the Elohim of other people, gods of other people, of the other nations, other whatever. No, he's just saying there's many who are called Elohim, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. You see, gods many. Notice right here when we look up gods and lords, there's three verses where these two ideas come up powerfully in. The first is in the Debarim or, or Deuteronomy for Yahweh, who we know is the Elohim of the Hebrews, says your Elohim is. So our Elohim is the Elohe HaElohim, is the Elohim of Elohims, is the nature of natures, the nature of the Neturu, the net of the Neturu, is the God of gods. You, you know what I'm saying? This is our declaration right you know he's he's a he's a great l a mighty one right a dreadful or terrible one who regardeth not persons who regardeth not panim who regardeth not faces literally he don't regard persons to say faces he doesn't have a respect of faces nor taketh a reward right so forth and so on then we come down to this right here and it says, but to us, right? Not everybody is of that us. You can open the Bible and point to this verse. That doesn't mean you are of us. You know what I'm saying? It's like we have to really say this. One can grow a dreadlock or, or, or say Selassie or Rastafari, but that does not mean that they are one of us. So we have to know who are us. And that means one has to know themselves, right? Because in order to be one of us, you have to know yourself. Right in this, that means knowledge is important. Right, ye shall know the truth, and the truth, why right, shall set you free, free from all these denominational, these gods, all this kind of crazy talk around the Bible. It, it's kind of good to be able to listen to things, and I might feel a little empathy or even sympathy for ones when I hear some of these useless arguments. That if you just stop and study for a moment. Those questions to be answered, but like my sister says, she says that, what, what she said right here? She said, she said, some people just need something, anything to argue about. But to us, there is one, right, Elohim, the Father, right? So for us, some might talk about goddesses. And they say, oh, you have a male God and you don't have no, no, where's the woman? Didn't I show you all already right there? We did this in another video and, you know, we thought that ones will probably pick up on it. They will pick up on it in their own time. Hopefully they'll pick up on it before it's too late. I, I mean, I'm saying this in all sincerity right here, you know, without, you know, respect of persons. This right here. Then we show you this right here. Wisdom. Wisdom. As it says in Proverbs 1 and 8, My son, my disciple, hear the instruction of thy father. Right? Elohim ha'ab. Forsake not the law, the Torah of thy mother. Right? Bereshith. Right? Reshith is wisdom. Bereshith. You go to Proverbs 4 and 7 and then build a little bit more. Right? Overstand what some might refer to as the mystery of the Hebrew creation. In Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1, when you go to Proverbs chapter 8, right? Bring out this understanding. Not everybody got this knowledge, right? What I'm sharing with ones, that when one say in the beginning, we know that it's in Reshith. If you translate it with the beginning idea, there's no the there. It would be Reshith in beginning. But we know that the beginning was wisdom, right? Wisdom, Chokmah. Right in wisdom, bereshit bara Elohim. In wisdom, bara, right, created. He created. He singularity Elohim. Right, bara Elohim would mean in the Hebrew Elohim bara. Elohim, which people say is gods or powers, right? Powers he created. It's not saying that he created the powers, but that. He in singularity is the powers, Bereshith in she in wisdom, right? Remember what Yeshua says? Yeshua says, Wisdom is a mother, right? Wisdom is a mother. Didn't want to get off of this verse right here, 
But it, but where Yeshua says that wisdom is justified. Look it up. Google it. Google it. Wisdom is justified of all for children. Bible verse, and and it'll come up. Right, right now, right here, right now. We're just gonna get through this right here. But to us, I and I, there is one Elohim, the Father, Elohim, Ha'ab, Ha'ab, the Father, Ab, like Abba, Ab, Father, Ha'ab, the Father, of whom are all things. And we in him, and one Lord, one Adon, right? One Adon, going from the Hebrew, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yeshua the Messiah, by whom are all things, and we by him. Now what it says right here to note, in, for, right, in him, for him, right? And we in him, some, okay, they try to bring out ice as for him. Right in him, but the the real Greek sense will be like in him. You see, they won't put for him because of that intimacy. But the Hebrews understood. That's the whole point. The Hebrews understood that intimacy with our power, with our Elohim. Right, Yod Hey Weh Hey, He who be, He who becomes, He who was, He who is, He who will be. That is what affects the three. Right, subtle nuances of the enunciation, right? Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, basically to say, right? How be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. There is not in every man that gnosis, gnosis. You see, gnosis, Gnostic, there's not that knowledge. The deeper, more perfected and enlarged knowledge, they say, of this religion, right, of this way. Because originally it was called the way. This is the way. As such as belongs to more advanced, to be mature, right? To be mature, right? To be mature. Especially if things then it goes on in this sense, which is also contextually can be true, but I like to point out to this there's not that science, right? So now I'm going to use the Latin word, science. There's not that science. The, the Greek word is gnosis, where we get Gnostic from. There's not that gnosis. Right? There's not that gnosis. Right? So think about this when people be talking about, oh, the Gnostics and just beating up on things, carrying on these ancient counterfeit church arguments. A lot of it was just counterfeit. You know? I mean, who the, who the son has freed is free indeed. So, you know what I mean? This is why even those of our brothers and others that might choose other things, we know that they are free in that sense. But we just beware and warn them to be, don't be free to your fool. Like, so free, you could do whatever you want. Paul already touched on that, you know, but all things are not beneficial. Like I could do whatever I want, but all things are not beneficial. All things are not going to help me reach the point or the destiny, right, that the Almighty intended for I and I, so I should avoid that. How be it there is not in every man that knowledge, that science, for some with conscience, 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 with knowing, right, of the idol. So they have conscience, they have science, but it's only of the idol. I'm saying in in the rhema right now use of the word, since the word is a living word, this talks about the counterfeit Christianity. You know, the white Jesus isms and schism. There's a perfect picture for this. There's a picture you probably have seen, I think one's had it, I think Muda may have had it or others, right? Where they have all these ones, Marcus Garvey, different ones. Then they have Caesar Bogiers there, and they also have his majesty there. He said, What kind of see that's the conscience of the idol. Right, the conscience of the idol. Take no, I think we're gonna zoom in on that subject matter. The conscience. Do you have conscience of the idol? Right? To this hour, to when? To this hour, they eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience, look what it says, and their what? Conscience being weak. Right? That's why we focus on the Sunadesis. What is Sunadesis? Consciousness. Their consciousness being weak. To keep it simple, their consciousness being weak, right, is defiled. Right, is defiled. Right, their consciousness is weak, being defiled. Now, it's interesting because this area was talking about in the scripts whether ones was eating. Some were more vegan and some were still eating meat. This is what's interesting in a Rastafari kind of for, for I and I fellows of the royal order. This is what's an interesting reason right here, right? You know, like, yes, for those who are seeking to, to grow in grace, 
right? You know what I mean? To to gain the knowledge, not just the reading, but but the experience, like experiential knowledge, but because the conscience, right, being weak, and what conscience is the conscience of the idol. Right, this whole counterfeit Christianity, white Jesus thing, uh, 400 years and all that has really done, as they would say, as one would say, it's really done a job or, or a bad job, so to speak. You know what I mean? On, 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 on black people. You know, it's really done a job on us. You know, that consciousness of the idol. You know what I mean? Um, let me just point this out right here before we just seal up on this. You know, because this is all that ones and ones, a lot of ones, they just want to talk about that. You know, I mean, the white Jesus and all of that is a kind of an interesting study, but it's like we can get in that and we can come out of that, but some are kind of stuck, right, in the whole white Jesus. It's almost like we, we can show and prove how that is the real invention of man. My, this is the picture I had in mind right there. You know what I mean? With consciousness of the idol. Right? With consciousness of the idol. Right? You know, let me do it like that. You know, with consciousness of the idol. Right? That's the idol right there. Right? With consciousness of the idol. They eat of it. You know what I mean? They eat of their dainties. As the Bible talks about, like, we're wearing eye and eye to eat of their dainties. You know, they eat of these things. You know what I mean? And and this is how they kind of partake in this kind of rite and ritual. Both physically eat, right? And you know what, but they break bread with this. We don't break bread with, with Caesar Borgias. We don't we don't really break bread with that. You know what I mean? And the true church, right, of his majesty, neither did the true church of his majesty. But because their conscience, right? Because their conscience being weak. You know what I mean? You know, you know, being being weak is defiled. You know what I mean? It's defiled. Right? Is defiled. But this is the picture here that I was thinking of when I went into that verse a little bit further. Right? You know, black people are being deceived. Right? You know what I mean? You know, you know, they're being deceived about the basics. This is the picture that Hala Selassie commissioned for the church. Right, of Ethiopia. But since the godless and creeping coup, since the rebellion in 1974-75, what do we have? We have a lot of this being overturned too. You know, a lot of this is being overturned. And you have some ones and even a lot of rosters that even some ones I would have called brethren. But listen, my father and my mother is not their father and mother. I don't know. You know, remember we talked about the father, Elohim Ha'ab, the father. That's I and I father, you know, we say Abinu Sheba Shemayim within that context, our father who are in heaven, the father of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yeah, we say that because why right, Ethiopian black people are being deceived. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, what they're getting right here is the consciousness of the idol. Right? And I'm talking about the idol, right? The idol, the Roman idol, right? You know, this Roman Catholic thing. And this is all you see all over Ethiopia nowadays. Isn't that interesting? Is it ironic? I'm not saying that the Ethiopians didn't accept, you know, people bring gifts. So other Christians say, well, this is how we see Mary and child. Okay. You know, you know, they're free to do that. But how the Ethiopians and how the, the, the real church saw it, right? This is more the contrast right here, right? And it seems as though even a lot of Ethiopian people are more willing to accept Caesar Bogiers, and we already broke down and explained, and it's explainable very easily what happened in the Roman Catholic Church. What you see on the left hand is the Roman Catholic iconography. And it's interesting because Vatican only came about the papacy. The papacy. You see, the papacy, people would want to pretend that the Roman Catholic Church go all the way back to Yeshua. No, it does not. Right? No, it does not. It goes back to the papacy. Right. And you have to know, like, when the papacy came about. What was it? Five. What was it? Five thirty eight. Five thirty eight A.D. So. Le so let's get this correctly right here. Right. 
we have the one they call Constantine, which is a, a kind of a lot of fakery got caught up in that. The one they call Constantine. Then we have Azana, the Ethiopian, right? The, the Aksumite, right? Around three, different people say 310, some say 314, some people say 330, three this, three that. But let's say in the early 300s, right? Right, so the Ethiopian church, right, based on their tradition and based on their history and the archives that they present, goes back to the time of Azana, at least. Even though we know, biblically speaking, there's an older African, you know, Shemitic orientation, Ethiopian eunuch, the Candace, Meroe, Meroite. That's what makes that whole story very interesting, Aksum and, and Mero, you know. But we have... From the Bible, we can go back to the first century, but then if you want to then start with Azana, right, and Axum, that's the 300s, right? But then we know that the papacy was only established in, th in 538 A.D., 538 A.D. You see how they flip it on y'all? Right, you know, they have you looking at Constantine, right, which was not really the main problematic thing. Right, it was just problematic because other people were coming in from, from like like Christ said it, Yeshua said it. He says, "Y'all worship that which you know not." These other people who are calling themselves Christian didn't know what the hell they were worshiping. They liked some of the stuff they were hearing, some of the some of the Christians and the Nazarene and some of the fans. You know, like I told about Rasta fandom, they liked some of the things they were hearing said. You know, they they picked up on those things, right? But then they wanted to set it the way they were doing it, that they felt comfortable with it. And there was others saying, uh-uh-uh-uh, we are Yehudi. We are Judeans, Judahites. This, is, this started from amongst the remnant of Israel, of the Judah. That's why Yeshua says, y'all worship that which you know not. We know we worship salvations of the Jews, of the Jews, Jews, Jews. And when I say the Jews, I'm talking about we the black Jews, but just take it whatever way you can take it. You know, find out whether it's fact or fiction. So what is fact is that the Ethiopian church, right, whether we go to Acts of the Apostles, right, or whether we go to um, 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 the, third, the fourth century, <laughs> began before the papacy was established. Now, I'm not talking about Christians in, in Turkey or Constantinople and Byzantium, right? Or Christians in Italy, or in the Mediterranean, or in parts of Africa, or in parts of Arabia. We're not talking about that. <laughs> We're not talking about that. We're talking about the papacy, right? Because when we look at this, the, the counterfeit icon for us, it might be right for you. If you're a Roman Catholic, well, I guess that's right for you. But this is what is hijacking the latter day, you know, um, Ethiopian so-called Orthodox Tawadu Church. I know a lot of them say, you racist, it's not about no color. It's not, no, we're not saying no color, we're saying truth. Because we can show you in ancient writings that the church held to, right? The true church in this professing Ethiopian church thing, right? But the true church, pre-1975, pre-1974-75 church, right? The one that goes back to the more truer tradition. This church today is wild. I caught some pictures out there. And I said, word, it's like straight on Roman Catholic icon store. Shite, right? And I say, well, where is the one that his majesty commissioned? Where are those ancient icons? They're off in some museum around the world. It kind of reminds me of like the Indians, even though the Indians are also part of the church, that Oriental churches, where a lot of the art and fact that really show like the, 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 for lack of a better word, the Negroid features of Krishna and Buddha and different ones, they've been like shopped around the world. They, they're in other museums around the world because you get another group of people come in, right? And they see the, the, the Negro or the so-called black features and they might not reflect that. They might come from that, but they're made ashamed of that because what does Satan say? to Jehovah. He says skin for skin. Right? You know, he made it about skin for skin. We're not talking about skin for skin here. We're talking about what is right. In fact, it is the description of Mary's from an old document that we saw in the Ethiopian church archive. And we have that document where it actually describes her features. 
You know what I mean? You know, and it describes the features of a black woman, not anyone who is like Lucrezia Borgia. That picture that they have in the church is Lucrezia Borgia, the Borgias. So the black Hebrew and the Hebrew is like they're right about that. Because even before they were saying that, others had already revealed that. They just went with that. They went ham. They went ham. They went ham on that. For good purpose, because even still, many ones don't want to get that. You know what I mean? So this is what it talk about, the image of the beast, or or the image the image that um, provoked to jealousy. There's a, that part in one of the prophets. But it's all a part. It's, are ye not as the children right, of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Right now, 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 why is that said? Why? Right? What is this connection? Because as Israel was called to the right thing, even from the biblical tradition, the biblical tribe, right, and then went off after idolatry. Well, need we say more? <laughs> That's why I say, "Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword." Right. Once again, let's just seal up right here. Look, look, look. Th these pictures here. What happened to this? Is this a mistake? Right? Then there was this, there's this priest or, or archbishop who went on the BBC talking about denying right, the true humanity of Yeshua as an Afro-African Shemitic person. You know what I mean? Denying the true you know, humanity of the Virgin Mother. He got caught up in the whitewash too, you know, because the modern Jews, state of Israel stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this... Should it surprise us? That's why it says, ye Ethiopians also shall be huh, slain by my sword. What is the sword of God? It's the word of God. You know, there's some rosters that don't want to. They got caught up in it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Because their conscience, right? What? Because their conscience, right, being weak, right, being weak is defiled, right? What is this? Moluno. What's Moluno? It's polluted. It's stained. Is contaminated. This was used in New Testament of those who have not kept themselves pure from the defilements of sin. All right now, see that whole sin thing is a big thing there, right? That's what we like to bring it out as is missing the mark. There's a certain aim and aspiration anyone who is truly called, like Yeshua laid it out. You know, he laid it out. Anybody who want to be his disciple, all right? And one thing is, if we know that. The true iconography, right, was African Shemitic. In other words, yes, we can say, quote, black or had that that overt aspect of it because we're talking about the true humanity of, of Yeshua, of Yesus, of Jesus, of his mother, of the Israelites, of the Hebrews, right? And now you knew that before. Your iconography testifies against your sin, your uckery, your fuckery, Right? And now you fall from that, then what is it? Defiled, right? Who have soiled themselves. You know, you know, like they <laughs> they taking a piss or they shitting on themselves. Right? They soil themselves by fornication and adultery. Now a lot of people will put this in sexual terms. That's how the church gets them. Right? Just in sexual terms. But if you read the Bible, fornication was like was like worshiping, saying you're worshiping the true God the wrong way. Like adultery, adulterating, bringing in other shit, right? That don't have no place in there, you know, no connection to it, you know, to soil, to defile, right? Melas, melas, uh-oh, black. <laughs> now, people might want to take this and say because their conscience is black. No, it's like when we blot it out, you see this whole racism thing? Right, this whole racism thing. We knew that yes, they were they were African Shemitic people, and therefore you can see this in all the ancient. They, they're digging up churches. They're finding churches in Ethiopia, and I notice ones do take pictures, but I notice a lot of the Ethiopian now they have hashes. They don't. They don't really do. You know, they don't like to share that. A lot of them don't like to share that because they're going against where they're going. You know, see everything goes back to what they did to Haile Selassie the first. All right, that's, that further proves. You remember what it says? He who have the key of great King David. He who open and nobody can shut it. Right? And who shut it and nobody can open. In a sense, he kind of opened it up. Right? And this is where we're at in this particular time. And yes, this time is a judgment time. So to the point, once again, what is God's name? Now, remember it says that he shall have a new name, precious name, a new name. <laughs> 
Yes, I, Rastafari. That will be picked up with a part two. You know, that has to be dealt with more in a part two. We're already a little bit kind of, I want to say over time, you know, on this one right here. But I think we, we have kind of addressed this one. Okay, it was actually over here. We've addressed this one, I think, sufficiently for now. You know, what is the name of the, of, of, of the God? Well, the God, right? If you ask I and I, you know, it's, it's that yod Hey wah Hey, the Y-H-W-H, right? The Hebrew Y-H-W-H. Then we've seen some other ones, you know, do some of this, you know, right? Which is kind of interesting. It's getting close to it. I, I, I think they're beginning to pick up on what we have been saying years ago. People think it was crazy saying he be who he be. He is who he is. Yet we people like to go around saying it is what it is. <laughs> right? He exists. Right? He exists. This is interesting. Some, they had to actually look this up and find this, this concordance that brought out the Hebrew. Y-H-W-H is the verb. Hawa. I've been saying that. It's a verb. It's an action. Right? It's an action that's not outside of us, but is in us. Whenever we place it outside of us, this is when the idolatry comes in. You know what I mean? Right? Um, they say can never. I would not say it can never. It has been determined. Right? You know, it has been determined. It's what context is that name being brought out, right, within the text. But it comes from to exist. You know, he or Yahweh, like he. When we have eh yeah, eh yeah, or some say eh yeah, eh yeah, eh yeah, is like saying I, I exist, I am, eh yeah, right, eh yeah, asha, eh yeah, right, I am that which I am, I am who I am, to so to say, right, Yahweh, right, Yahweh, right, Yahweh, Yahweh is he who presently be, he who presently exists, he who exists right now, so he who was, Yahweh. Right, wahu haya, wahu hoe, wahu yihye, from the Hebrew, wahu and he, right, haya, haya, right, haya, yaha, somewhere I say yahawa, yahwa, yahawa, right, he who was, wahu hoe, hoe, or modern Hebrew say hove, hove, but really it's hoe, hoe from hawa, right, he who presently exists, he who's existing, right, present. Right, present, like the I am sense, right? Yahuwah, the I am sense. And then we have Wahu Yihye, Yihye, from the Hawa, Yihye, Yihye, who you will be, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yihye, right? But then some argue about vowels and everything else, which just proves once again the conscience, their conscience being weak, is defiled. And that defiling comes from the black part right there at the root, Melas, it's like they're blotted out. Like something blotted out. Like, you know, we're supposed to put on white garments, you know, to highlight our melanatedness, right? You know, as ethnic Israel, you know, but also the garment is a very refined sort of garment in and of itself. You know, the, the linen. Linen is an extraordinary fabric. But anyway, um, and then you get a, a blot, a stain on it. You know, you get a stain on it. That, that, that's the sense. That's the sense right there. You know what I mean? So here they say, therefore, the word or the name Yahweh means, well, actually, without the vowel tonation, right? Right? If we put it in the basic vowel tones, it'll be the one who exists, right? The existent one, to keep it kind of simple right there, right? Virtually all translations from Judaism and Christianity use the Lord. This is what we often try to avoid unless we're just reading the King James verse, you know, for, for the Hebrew name, Y-H-W-H, -H, you know, now when they say the original pronunciation, what well, it can be, the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, you know, we're able to determine it from the Hebrew of the scripture and according to the basics of the Hebrew grammar, which is an African Shemitic language or Afro-Shemitic language. So here, once again, you know, this is wrong here, which says, I am he. You can bring that out, but actually it says he, he be, he be, right? The sense is he be, right? So here they have the Hawa right, but they have the Yah part wrong. 
The Yah part is he who be. He who be. Right? The who is he as the pronoun. Right? The, the Yah, Yah part brings out the sense of he as a verb. You see, when we we could really get into this, but this is not to belabor, you know, belabor the point. But this is the name, right? This is the name, right, of the God and Father, right, of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? For other people, well, there's many gods and lords as there may be, you know what I mean? But he who be who he be, for I and I and we, he be the one, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Achad. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom, like, share, and if you're willing to, subscribe, hit that notification so you can be notified.